Today on Ion Northwest Politics, could there be an upset brewing in Southwest Washington? With all eyes on Republican candidates for Washington's third congressional district, a Democrat wins the primary election. But can Marie Glusenkamp Perez contend in November? I ask her that and more. Plus, there will be a new sheriff in town in Clark County, but who will it be? Chief Criminal Deputy John Hortz currently leads the pack. We talk about the issues he'll have to contend with if he becomes Clark County Sheriff. And a dilemma for Oregon hospitals. Oregon is facing a severe shortage of intensive care unit hospital beds. Why Pamplin Media Group's managing editor Dana Haynes says it's not all about COVID. Eye on Northwest Politics starts now. Thanks for joining us. This is Eye on Northwest Politics. I'm Ken Boddy. We're checking in on this week's Washington State primary results and our political headlines. First, the race for the open U.S. Senate seat incumbent Democrat Patty Murray and Republican Tiffany Smiley will square off in the general election in November. Senator Murray is seeking her sixth term in the U.S. Senate. In the race for Clark County Sheriff, Chief Criminal Deputy John Horch and Vancouver Officer Ray Reynolds will face off in November. I'll be speaking with Deputy Horch in just a few minutes. And one of the topics we'll discuss, voters approve funding for body cameras for the Clark County Sheriff's Office. They passed Proposition 11, authorizing a 0.1% bump in sales taxes. That extra funding will also go to upgrading the Clark County Jail. While Republicans vying for Washington State's 3rd Congressional District battled it out among themselves, the Democrat in the hotly contested race, Marie Glusenkamp Perez, walked through the front door in the primary with the most votes at about 32 percent and a spot in the November election. This race getting national attention as incumbent Republican Congresswoman Jamie Herrera Butler fights to retain her seat while fending off her closest Republican challenger, Trump-endorsed Joe Kent. Herrera Butler was one of two Washington state representatives who voted to impeach Donald Trump. And here with me to talk about the third congressional district race is Marie Glusenkamp Perez. Thanks for joining me on Eye on Northwest Politics. Thank you so much. I am so glad to be here. Well, we focus so much attention on the Republicans in your race that you almost flew under the radar. Were you counting on Republicans to split the vote and give you the path to November? Well, you know, I think the math was really clear that they were pretty busy. There was a, a, so many Republicans slinging mud on the other side that I, I understand why that took a lot of oxygen out of the out of the room. But you know, I think we have a lot to offer over here. You know, I'm the only candidate that does not live in Clark County. Uh, you know, I am a a rural uh, Washingtonian, and I work in the trades. I own an auto repair and a machine shop, and so I think. Like we are um, running a really unique campaign over here. You were uh, tremendously outspent in the primary. Uh, let's take a look at the numbers right now. Uh, Jamie Herrera Butler uh, had more than three and a half million dollars in her war chest. Uh, Joe Kent about two million. Heidi St. John with about a million uh, compared to your approximately 240,000. Uh, what do you think that says about your campaign? Well, I think that we were fortunate. I just get to be who I am and uh, which is, you know, a, a working family. Right. Uh, and that is very compelling for voters. That is uh, something that is missing from politics today. And so they had to spend a lot of money attacking each other, singing mud. And when you look at the outside money that came in, Jamie actually spent closer to six million on her behalf to eke by with mm, maybe 23 percent of the vote. And so, you know, that is a really tough spot for her to be in. Let's talk priorities here. Why are you running and what do you hope to accomplish should you win this congressional seat? Well, I'm running because small business owners like me don't have a voice. You know, we get a lot of lip service and, and not substantive action. You know, there's just so much clickbait politics going on right now. There's gridlock. And, and people aren't getting to work to deliver what we really need in this state. Um, you know, we had cracks in the Cascade Locks. That's one of the biggest wheat ports in America. Jamie's out here emailing about beanbagging sea lions. There has been such a disinvestment in rural infrastructure and infrastructure broadly. Uh, you know, as a small business owner, um, I don't look at my, you know, 60-year-old roof and say, oh, that's an asset. Glad I saved money on that, right? There are serious problems 
you know, I've had a now hiring sign in front of my auto shop for eight months. Um, kids aren't graduating with the technical skills uh, they need to be successful in this economy. And these are family wage jobs people can be proud of, and uh, we're just not uh, delivering the skills. You have deep roots in Southwest Washington. Uh, you and your husband, as you mentioned, own an auto repair shop. Uh, you graduated from Reed College. How does all of that, that background, influence your politics today? Right. You know, that's the wild thing. I, I mentioned I'm the only candidate in the general who's ever run that is not from Clark County. I mean, that is wild to me. I get my water from a well. I live on a gravel road. I get my internet from a radio tower. On bad weather days, I don't get internet at all. You know, and these are the things, the infrastructure that people need to have a thriving economy. And so that is a, a huge motivator for me. And I'm, and I'm really proud of my Washington State heritage. My great-great-grandpa was actually Actually, one of the uh, Corey Foreman on the Olympia Capitol building project and it's buried up in Tenino. So really proud to have an opportunity to really serve and deliver what this district needs. Yeah, just so our viewers know, uh, you say you're the only candidate that does not live in Clark County. Where are you? I'm in unincorporated Skamania County. So kind of around Cape Horn area, Washougal. All right. So that definitely makes you different from all the other candidates in this race. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest issues in Congress now and in individual states, reproductive freedom after the Supreme Court decision on Roe v. Wade. Yeah. What would you do in Congress regarding that issue? What would you like to see? It is insane to me that we have fallen so far behind. You know, we're, we're back in the 1950s. And, it, and this is not about, you know, the minutia of constitutional law. I mean, this is, do we believe Americans have a right to privacy in their own health and medical choices, right? Um, this is one of the most basic freedoms we enjoy in America. And it is really disturbing to me to see candidates who ostensibly support small government interjecting the government in some of our most basic freedoms. Um, you know, not only did Jamie Herrera vote or uh, urge the Supreme Court to overturn Roe, she then celebrated its overturn by voting against a bill that would have ensured our access to contraception. If you're against abortion and you're against contraception, you are an extremist. And you are, she is out of line with this district's values on that. Most Americans are very concerned about inflation right now. Gas prices, groceries. Yeah. Uh, what's your plan to address that? Oh, yeah. I mean, nobody knows that better than small business owners like me. You know, the same box of gloves I paid $5 for in 2019, I'm still paying $25 for. I mean, costs are going through the roof, and it really feels like we don't have representation who understands how bad it's gotten, how tough it is. And, you know, so much of this is um, like two and a half years into the pandemic, we still don't have a capacity for manufacturing medical grade masks in America. And so this disinvestment in American manufacturing has been coming down the pipe for decades. And until we have people, small business owners like me, who know and value, you know, um, American manufacturing, American jobs, things will not change. Do you feel that police and sheriff's offices need more funding? Absolutely. I mean, what there are 49 absences in the Clark County uh, Sheriff's Department right now. They're not able to hire, you know. And when you look broadly at a federal level, I think the the average starting wage is thirty five thousand dollars for a police officer. I mean, how many people are going to go out and risk their lives for thirty five thousand dollars a year? You know, as a small business owner, I know that when I offer higher starting wages, I get uh, a, a bigger pool of candidates, and and that's what we need. Um, what you know, what we don't need is the sort of federal bills that are getting people more hummers and things like that. We need to invest in operating expenses. The third district leans Republican and Herrera Butler has been around for six terms. Uh, what makes you think that a Democrat can actually win this district? I think it's very clear that this district and Americans broadly are fed up with incumbents. Um, we are tired of the gridlock in. Congress. So I would say rather than this being uh, a year in which a Democrat can't win, I would say this is the year in which incumbents are toast. <laughs>
So uh, you're very confident that you can uh, make this a race. Now that it's one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you and likely uh, Jamie Herrera-Butler, uh, you think you can make your, your case, right? Well, Jamie has been absent for so long in this district. I mean, she's refused to do in-person town halls. She refuses to answer phone calls or to, you know, go on a debate floor. And, and uh, voters are fed up with that. We need accountability in our leadership. We need uh, folks that are present and willing and ready to do the work. And we don't have that right now. And that's something I can offer. Marie Glusenkamp Perez, thank you for joining me on Eye on Northwest Politics. Thank you so much. Thanks. And next, we stay in Southwest Washington with the top vote getter in the race for Clark County Sheriff. My conversation with John Horsch, a 33 year veteran of the Clark County Sheriff's Office, we tackle issues including use of force, staffing shortages, and body cameras. That's next on Eye on Northwest Politics.